Okay, hello. Okay, wait, let me set up this thing first. And then do this on pause, otherwise the music is going to be... Okay, here we go. Um, is audio okay? Can everyone hear me? Um, yeah, my mic's picking things up. Uh, I'm not sure whether you can hear or not. Okay. Uh, microphone real time. Okay. <coughs> okay. Hi everyone. Today we're going to do 2015 uh, Science Physics Paper 2. Okay. Uh, subject code 5076. Um, yeah. Um, I think today the day will be a little bit shorter. Yeah, but a lot of the questions that this year is like have to describe one. So good for practicing writing. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at section A, question one. Okay. In cold countries. People wear coat they are designed to reduce the rate at which the thermal energy is lost from their bodies. The material for some coats is made from a layer of thin strips of silver colored plastic between two layers of fabric. So you have two layers of fabric and strips of silver colored plastic. Okay, so we have two things. We have the strips of plastic and we have the silver color. Two things to take note, okay? So now the plastic, now, okay, one thing about the plastic, the plastic, Trap small pocket of air between them. So I think this one we've seen many times already, even in 2014. Now I explain why the layer of silver colored plastic strip reduces loss of thermal energy. Okay, by conduction, convection, radiation. Okay, now conduction. Okay, conduction. We have two points, so we need two reasons. Okay, so the first point is okay. Or, um, I think by now you should be, if you're doing like since 2010 onwards, you should be familiar that, um, okay, when you have trapped air, okay, when you have trapped air, air is a poor conductor of heat. Right, so, uh, you can say that, now, the plastic strips trap air and air is a Conductor, eh, no, a poor conductor of heat. Poor conductor of okay. Instead of heat, use thermal energy. Not sure why, but you know, okay, I can. All right then. Um. Okay, and next time, the next one would be um. Okay, in addition. Okay, because we are not talking about like uh like a whole block of plastic thing, these like plastic strips. So in addition, the even though for plastic, right, it is a solid, so the plastic strips may not fully touch each other. Okay, may not fully touch each other. Okay, and this will reduce the rate of uh, heat, uh, thermal energy loss. Okay, this will reduce, reduces, okay, loss of thermal energy by conduction. Okay. Okay, one down. Okay, next one, convection. Convection, um, trap air, so the air, yeah, the, the small pockets of air inside the trap air may not be connected to one another. So, the small pockets of air, Okay, the flow of air is not good inside either. So, small pockets of air may not uh, be connected to each other. Okay, to each other. Or you can say that, you know, convection current uh, is difficult to be set up within the plastic strips. Yeah. Mm. So, conversion is limited. Um, each small pockets of air. Okay, that's all. Okay, so I think this one quite unique. Uh, this, um, but, yeah, it's like the conversion does not happen within the, um, the, the, the layer of trap air. Then, for radiation, then, because, of, because it's radiation, then we talk about the silver colored one. So uh, the strips are silver color. Okay. 
strips are silver, which are a poor absorber, poor yeah poor absorber of heat. Okay, and in this case, uh, it is poor absorber and emitter because like, it serves both functions. So only for this case, we can talk about two functions. Okay, of uh, infrared radiation. Okay, only in this case we can talk about two uh, functions. Alright, so for this case, right, special. Um, yeah, other cases. Okay, limit. Uh, limit the what do you call? Limit the use of what do you call this? Uh, absorber. Uh, emitter and radiator okay, to its specific use. Okay, but only for this case because there are two uses. Uh, is the use is the absorb and emit, but it doesn't absorb, it doesn't really release. So yeah, we can use both. Alright. Okay. So question one done. Okay. Question two. Question two, question two, okay. So question two. Now when an aircraft is about to take off, it accelerates along the runway from a rest at a rate of 3.0 meter per second square. So acceleration 3.0 meter per second square, uh, 25 seconds, okay. The average mass of the aircraft, okay, I can see force coming, you got, you know, MA, okay. What else, okay. Calculate the average accelerating force. Okay, so force is equals to mass times acceleration, or more like the resultant force. It's mass times acceleration. So mass times acceleration. So we get 3.6 times 10 to the power of 5 Newton. Check kg meter per second squared all in SI unit. Okay, check now. Remember to check. Okay, 3.6 times 10 to the power of 5. Okay, next one, the speed after 25 seconds. So the speed after 25 seconds, we can make use of A equals to V minus U over T because we are looking for the final speed after 25 seconds. Final velocity or the final speed. Okay, and then... Uh, from rest, okay, good. The thing is, from rest must catch the from rest. So from here, you can say that the initial speed is zero meter per second square, right? So using the acceleration, three point zero, we've got v minus zero over twenty five. Okay, check ah, uh, the units are okay meter per second square, meter per second, and seconds and so on. Okay, and yeah. Okay, so check the units. We've got uh, 75. So 75 will be equal to V, right? 75.0 meter square, uh, meter per second. Next, the minimum vertical force for takeoff. Okay, the minimum vertical force for takeoff. Now, so for this case, we need A also. Okay. Okay, you see, ah. Uh, okay, here. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's draw the rocket like this. Hey. Okay, rocket. Alright, so you've got the upward accelerating force because it's a rocket, right? So there's an upward accelerating force. Okay. Um, okay, but doing the force, right? So the force is actually uh, 3.6 times 10 to the power of 5 newtons. Okay, upward force. The lift. Okay, now. However, you are held back with uh, the downward force. And what is actually the downward force? The downward force is the weight of the, um, what do you call that, of the weight. Okay, sorry. Sorry, this is wrong. Okay, you need a lift. Okay, so this is the minimum vertical force for takeoff. Okay, so this is the one that you're looking for. Okay, however, you have the downward force, which is actually the weight. Okay. The weight is given by mg, okay, and this weight is equals to, uh, okay, uh, okay, so let's calculate the weight first, okay, w equals to mg, now the mass is 1.2 times 10 power 5, g is 10, 
So this is 12 times 10 to the power of 5 Newton. Okay, 12 times 10 to the power of 5 Newton. Now the thing is, what is the minimum vertical force for takeoff? The minimum vertical force is actually, it should actually match this thing. Okay, it should match this. Okay, or it should be a little bit higher than that. Okay, it must balance the weight of the aircraft. Right. Otherwise, um, it, the, the weight will be greater and will still be on Earth. Okay. So the minimum weight will be, okay, this one you have to tidy up to be 1.2 times 10 to the power of 6 newtons. Okay, so this is a special one. Okay, this is a special one. Now, if they are asking um, what is the lift generated uh, based on this thing, uh, okay, special question, uh, extra. Okay, so based on a right so what is the leaf generated okay then you need to make use of net force okay and the net force will be equals to leaf the leaf upper lift minus of the weight okay and just now the net force are uh, calculated was 3.6 so then here you make use of the 3.6 that is about 5 newtons if you're not sure, then uh, the weight was uh, 1.2 times 10 to the power of 6. Okay, so yeah, that's the leaf that you needed to find. Okay, but for this question, it's a minimum vertical force for the curve. Okay, and usually for this question, it will it's worth 2 marks. Okay, but the moment, that's why, that's why I, I stand for a while. And then the moment I say, hey, one mark, uh, must be simpler. It <laughs> shouldn't be, it like, shouldn't require 2 separate steps. Okay, so yeah, maybe just like that. Okay, so this one you take note. Okay, then yeah, you take note for part C, the minimum vertical force for takeoff is actually equals to the weight, and that is when it will start to move a little bit or a little bit more than weight, so it will move a bit, but very slow. Lah. Okay, of course, you need more for the ideal takeoff. Okay, and uh, what else? Um, yeah, that's all for this question. Okay, so this one trick question. Ah. Now, um, number three. Okay, electromagnetic waves have many applications. Complete three point one to state the region used for each of the applications. So, mobile phone, mobile phone would be uh, microwave. Okay, microwaves. Sunbed, sunbed will be ultraviolet. Remote control, infrared. So, so this one have to really have to memorize one. Satellite, satellite television, uh, also microwaves, okay? Because satellite television, okay? Anything to do with satellite, microwaves, okay? And uh, if it's on Earth, like you have a tower and you receive television, uh, frequency and you know the wavelength that would be radio waves, okay? So satellite, I mean, anything for satellite would be microwave. Now state which type of electromagnetic wave you have named in table triple one has the greatest frequency. Greatest frequency will be down the list. So it would be ultraviolet. Okay, so this one is a recall question. Everything should be fingertip. Okay, all right. Question three done. Question four. The two liquids A and B are contained in a U-tube as shown in figure 4.1. The liquids do not mix. Okay, so this is a typical um, pure question, but they, are, they wanted to ask here in combined science. Okay, but can, right? Let's do this. All right. Uh, they give us cross-sectional area. They give us liquid A density. They give us uh, the different types of the liquid. Okay, and we've got liquid B. All right, so take note, uh, we have a very... They draw a line for you, x and y, point x and point y. Okay, and that's the boundary where things happen actually. So the cross-sectional area of the U-tube is 3.0 cm square, right? Then, okay, the density is this, point x is the junction, point y is the same horizontal level. Uh, the surface of liquid A is 15 cm above point X, the secret of surface B, okay, okay. Calculate the mass of liquid A in the U-tube, so the mass, okay, we've got area, we've got this, so we can get the volume, and we've got density, okay, so by now you should know that, you know, uh, area times height will give you volume, okay, so first the volume, okay, 
volume will be the area the cross sectional area times height. So cross sectional area is three point zero, height is fifteen. So this would be and check uh, cm square and cm, right? So this would be forty five cm cube. Next, using density, so rho equals to m over v. So density also cm cube so one point two gram per cm cube. Mass over forty five. Right, 45 times 1.2 so the mass will be equals to um, 54 gram right 54 gram okay once again check the units uh. this one is is 3 gram per cm cube this one is cm cube so must check properly okay okay number two the pressure at point x due to liquid a Right, so pressure. So here, the pressure you need to the okay using the pressure P equals to F over A force over area. Uh, first you need the force. The area very simple. Area was three point zero. Okay, um, three point zero. Check the unit cm square. Okay, now the key thing is to look for the force. So how do we look for the force and where is the force coming from? For this thing, the force is due to the weight. Okay, the force is due to the weight. So here is the pressure on X. So it is uh, you need the weight acting on X. Okay, so what is the weight? W weight equals to mg. So m was fifty four earlier. G was ten. A. Eh. Okay, fifty four gram. Ah, uh. fifty four gram. So fifty four gram. So the 54, you must be careful, the gram must change to kg. Okay, then times 10. Okay, so this would be, this would be 0 0.054. 0 0.054. Okay, sorry, 0 0.54. Right, okay, 0 0.54. Okay, Newton. Okay, take note, uh, must be in SI unit when we calculate force. Okay. And then this is 0 0.54 Newton over cm square. So this is 0 0.18 Newton per cm square. Okay. Alright, so be careful for the Newton, okay, when you find the weight, okay, make sure it is um, SI unit. Okay, next, B, the pressure due to liquid B at point Y is the same as the pressure due to liquid A at point X. So, yeah, so the thing is, the pressure at B, okay, the pressure at B is equal to the pressure at A, due to liquid, okay, the pressure of at Y, sorry, is equal to the pressure at X. Okay, and the pressure at Y, you can expand again to get force over area. Okay, the pressure at X, just now we calculated was 0 0.18 Newton per cm squared. Okay, now then, making use of the force, the, where was the force again? Mg. So Mg, you can expand the Mg there. Area is the same area actually, 3.0. Okay, 3.0. Now, then G, just nice, you can change the G to 10. Right? Change the G to 10. Okay? So, um, here you have, um, okay, uh, M would be equals to 0 0.18 times 3 divided by 10. So, this would be... Okay, great. 0 0.18 times 3 divided by 10. So this is 0 0.054 again. Okay, 0 0.054 kg. Right? Change to gram. Change to gram. So this would be uh, kg to gram times 1000. So this would be 54 gram. Okay, 54 gram. Now then, make use of this. Okay, your volume is equal to 
cross-sectional area than side. So it's a repeated thing. Okay, <laughs> it's a repeat of the earlier concept. So volume equals to cross-sectional area than side. Okay, wait. I won't find the volume. We need the density. Okay, wait. We have the volume. We need a volume. We need a volume. Okay. So volume is equals to uh, cross-sectional area times height. The height now is 24 cm. Okay. Okay, maybe I should put this here. Okay, 3 times 24. This is 72. 72 cm cubed. Right, we've got gram, we've got cm cubed. Last but not least, density. So density will be equals to mass over uh, volume. Okay, so your final answer will be 0.75 gram per cm cubed. Alright. Okay, so the, the idea is this. Um we are okay. The idea is this. Um you are given this um you are given this uh, pressure information. So the pressure at y is equal to pressure at x. So obviously we need to look for pressure at y. Okay? And from the pressure at y, okay, what are we looking for in the end? We are looking for density. Right? So on hindsight you should know that in density you need mass, you need volume. Okay, can you get the mass? Actually, it's from here. Um, do the same thing to get the mass, 54 gram. Okay, and then the volume is like what we did earlier. Volume is equal to cross section area times height. Okay, and it's three worth three points, so you need more than two steps. In this case, I think like three, four steps. Yeah, or to extend the thinking like two, three, four times. So um, you might lose much because of this, but um, I think as long as you use the information given. Okay, and you are able to make use, uh, find, able to like, f uh, identify what you need in the end. For this case, you need mass, you need volume. Okay, as long as you are goal oriented, you need that. Then I, I believe you can use whatever information you need to find the final answer. Okay, so that is uh, this question, no? question four. Okay, uh, a bit challenging uh, this question. Okay, next question five. Okay, an archer fires an arrow vertically upwards into the air, as shown in Figure Five Point One. Okay, the arrow. Okay, then the string of the bow is pulled back a distance of sixty cm. Okay, using an average force of one two five newton. The arrow has a mass of zero point one eight kg. Okay, so maybe you write this down. All this down. Huh? Okay, so the distance is sixty cm. Okay, the force is 125 newtons, the mass is 0 0.18 kg. Okay, the energy transferred to the arrow when the string is released is 78.5% of the energy stored in the bowl. This is important, so we need to look back at this sentence again. Ignoring any effects of friction, calculate the work done in pulling back. So, work done is force times distance. Now, force, 125. Distance 60 in cm change to meter as a unit. So this will be 0 0.6 meters. Okay, 0 0.6. So 1.25 uh, 1, times 0 0.6 is 75 joules. Okay, check SFR 75 joules. Okay, next. The speed in which the arrow leaves the bow. Now this one speed. We can think of speed equals to distance over time. If you've got distance, got time or not? No time given. Is there any information for us to find the time? No, so don't have. Okay. Uh, what other things do we have? What other uh, formula for speed that we have? Uh, A. Okay, this one. Acceleration equals to this over that. Okay, also you need a time. Right? So not this formula. Any other formula of speed that you don't need time? Actually, this one. Okay, you need kinetic energy is equals to half and v square. No time needed, correct? So what is going on is now before that, let's take a look at this uh, this sentence. Now the energy transferred to the bow is the seventy five energy stored seventy five percent of the energy stored in the bow. Meaning your final kinetic energy final kinetic energy is equals to seventy five percent of the whatever initial uh, initial energy in bow, okay, or your work done in the bow, 
Okay, you are working in the both. So for this case, the final kinetic energy, half mv square, so half m v square is equals to 75% or 3 quarter, okay, 75% okay, of the initial energy, so 75 joules from part 1. Okay, so then we can simplify and you know do all this uh, ding ding dong dong. Okay, so we have okay on the left can simplify to 0 0.09 v square on the right we simplify to 56.25 v square is going to be equals to uh okay divide by 0 0.09 okay so v is square root of this so last but not least the final answer 25 meter per second Okay, another three mark question. But I think like they want to give the credit of the this one, the conversion, and after that the first is the conversion, the second one would be uh seventy five percent. Okay? Yeah, and the third part would be how to manage that to find the answer. Okay. All right for B, take note, huh? Okay. C the maximum height reached by the bow. Hi your Okay, so initially, what energy is present again? Initially, what energy is present again? It's the seventy-five percent of energy, correct? Um, okay, so the the whole track is this. We've got the potential energy in the bowl. Oh wait, wait, wait! I should cross this out. Okay, you've got your PE in the bowl converted to kinetic energy, and as the arrow reaches the top, you've got the uh, maximum height so you converted to GPE okay so you can take this potential en energy in the bowl so the 75% uh, or the 56.25 actually okay so this is the 75% of the 75 okay 56.25 this will be equals to your GPE so equals to M G H okay maybe I should write write down this thing Okay. It equals to GPE. Okay. Then shift this here. Okay, so GPE will be M. What was M? Zero point one eight. G H. Okay. So last but not least, the H you divide off, you should get thirty one point two five meters. But change to SI unit so 31.3 meters okay okay so this is question 5 ABC Okay. okay, number six. Wow, number six is next. The next challenging thing. Okay, so a cyclist applies a vertical force of one one zero on the pedal of a bicycle. One bicycle, as shown in Figure six point one. Okay, so you've got the pedal here. Uh, the vertical force is here. Then they give this fifty cm. Now let's take a look. Don't just rush into things. Just look closely. Fifty cm. What is this fifty cm for? It is a perpendicular distance. Okay, 90 degrees there. So, so meaning force, perpendicular distance, moments up. You need a moment. Now then the next one 8 cm. The radius is 8 cm to the to the pedal. Okay, fine. Uh, what else do we need? The chain, the pivot, A, B. Okay, as you travel along, the pedal moves to a circle of radius 8 cm. For the pedal in the position shown, the line, the line of action of the force is 5 cm from the pivot. So meaning the force is 5 cm perpendicularly away from the pivot, okay, which is the center of the thing. Okay, good pivot. Now calculate the moment of the force about the pivot. So moments, okay, great. So this is force times distance. Okay, so 
you don't have to think about clockwise any clockwise movement. But since they just ask movement, so we just look for movement, for subsistence. Unless they say that it's balanced, then we need to make use of the, if the, what you call that, the, there is no, like when you say, when the situation is balanced. Okay, so next, 110, 5cm, okay, since the final unit is cm, so this will be 5, so this would be 5, 5, 0, okay, Newton, cm. Okay. And okay. B. The pedal moves from position A to position B as shown in Figure six point one. Okay. Explain why the force applied at A has a different effect from the same force applied at B. Okay, so the pedal moves from A. Actually, the force applied at A will have a different effect on the same force. Okay, so okay, let's take a look at this situation then. They say that the force applied at A will have a difference at the force applied at B in order to what do you call this to. Okay, if you apply the same force, then it will have a different effect. Okay, so at A, okay, so let's take a look at the pivot. Okay, so just now I think it gives us a taste of how do we calculate moment. Okay, and it's down to our understanding how do we calculate moment. So this one, it just now it was 5 cm away. The force applied was 5 cm away from the pivot. Now let's say if you are taking moments at A, no, uh, taking moments at about the pivot, but you are stepping on A. Okay, you are stepping on A. Right, then how... What is the for, what's the distance away from the pivot? What's the perpendicular distance away from the pivot? So is this a perpendicular distance? No, it's not. Okay, the perpendicular distance must be you know perpendicular, and this is not perpendicular, right? It has to be like horizontal to the force or something. So the thing is, at A, any vertical force would not generate any moment because there's no perpendicular distance. Okay, for B. Okay, for B, now there is a perpendicular distance and then it's easier to step because like, it's a, like the, the distance is greater than 5 cm and so on. You get the full radius. Okay, so you can explain that. Okay, so uh, explain why the force applied A will have a different effect. Um, okay, so okay. the force, okay, so the, fa the differentiating factor is the perpendicular distance. Okay, from the pivot. Okay. Um, okay, perpendicular distance from the pivot to the force or to the line of action of force. Okay, in case you're not sure, you can always check to this one. Okay, to the line of action of the force. Okay. Mm. Is it is okay, so it is greater at B, okay, and there is none at A, so as compared to A, okay, so what is the different effect? So, um, the moment at B, the moment generated at B, okay will be greater than the moment generated at A. Ah, okay, greater. Okay. Okay, if the same force is applied. Okay. Okay, so this is 
question six. Okay, a moment one. The first part is calculation, second one is the explanation. Okay, alright, so what else? Okay, I think that's enough. Okay, seven. Okay, seven. Okay, a periscope is used to look over the top for obstacles. So what, what you can what is the use of periscope is you don't see it in your eye level, you see it in the level above the eye level. Okay, or above it, depending on how long is your periscope. Okay, so uh one type consists of two triangular prisms, it's not mirror but prisms. They are fixed at, at each other at each end of a tube as shown in figure seven point one. Okay. So two prisms, um, each prism have angles of 4, 90 and 45 degrees. Okay, the critical angle is 42 degrees. Okay, so maybe put one side. C is 42 degrees. Right, a ray of light from the top and object O okay, passes through the periscope. The image is viewed at E by the person. Okay, so you have object O. Okay, and the object O is represented by an arrow. Okay, it can be teddy bear, it can be something, but it's represented by that, that uh, arrow. Then, uh, okay, so state two reasons why light is... Okay, so what can you see actually? You will actually see, I think you will see this, if I'm not wrong. Or you see like an, an upside down version, depending on how the light rays will turn up. Okay, so state two reasons why light is reflected inside each prism. So prism made of glass, but the problem is why does the... Light ray reflect in the glass because of this special thing called total internal reflection. So, uh, actually, so this question, what is this question actually asking? Is the two reasons, okay, for total internal reflection. Okay, so what's the two reasons? Okay, so the angle of incidence, okay, in the glass prism. Okay, in the glass prism is 45 degrees. So this angle of incidence, okay, this angle will be 45 degrees. Okay, so uh, which is greater than critical angle 42 degrees. Okay. All right. So, so the, the second, second one is the uh, the light ray. Okay. Uh, is traveling. Okay, the light ray in the glass prism. Okay, inside each prism. So the uh, the light ray is traveling. Okay. Oh no, more like the question mentioned that inside each each glass prism. So I tend to mention it. So the light. Okay, the light ray is traveling from optically denser medium. To an optically less dense medium. To okay. So yeah. Okay. okay so me. So, so these are the two reasons for total internal reflection. The talk about critical angle. Talk about the light ray from. Uh, denser to less dense medium. Okay, so on 7 figure point 1, complete the ray from the base of the object O. Okay, so we need to complete the ray. Okay, yeah, no problem. So, how do you complete the ray? Using a, yeah, draw a straight line using a river ruler. Okay, don't be like me. Okay, then you can draw a straight line down. Okay, then you can draw the straight line up like that. Okay, and okay, include the arrows first. Include the arrows. And last but not least, okay, the image is like this. Okay, the image, make sure that it's image drawn nicely. So this would be image. Okay, is there anything that we need to label? Uh, draw the appearance of object O as seen through the periscope. So image I. Okay, just label it I then. Okay, so two marks, right? One, in the space below, draw the image O. Uh, Image of object O. Just like that. Anything else? I think nothing special. Okay, image of O. Okay. Alright, so the, why is it so? Because now this is the base, and this light ray, right, the blue color light ray is the one that we traced just now, 
is uh, will, will uh, be at the base of object O. The tip of object O will also correspond to this tip of the object O. So this thing is upright. Okay, we can say that this uh, image is upright. Upright image. Okay. Ten. All right. So that's all. Okay, for question seven. Uh, okay, next question eight. Three resistors X, Y, Z are connected in parallel to a six volt battery as shown. Okay, so the total effective resistance of the current is zero point seven five ohm. Okay, so the total effective so R total is equal to zero point seven five ohms. Okay, so the current in resistor X is three ampere. Current in resistor Y one ampere. Calculate the total current in the battery. The current in the battery, or the total current in the battery. Okay, so it will. Okay, so very easy. So this is just R equals to V over I, right? So the zero point seven five. If the one in the total uh, circuit. Okay, the volt for the total circuit six point zero current, right? So therefore, current is equal to six point zero over zero point seven five. Uh, this will be equals to eight point zero ampere two SFR. Remember, okay. The current in resistor Z. Okay, the current in resistor Z very straightforward. Now the current, the total current, will be equals to current in X plus current in Y plus current in Z because parallel have to split the current out. So the total one is eight. Current in X is three. Current in Y is one, then plus the current through Z. So the current through Z is equals to four ampere, right? Four ampere. Okay, that's like that. Okay, then the resistance of resistor Z. Now, first, uh, let's look at the information. We have uh, six point zero volts here. Six point zero volts here. Six point zero volt here because parallel circuit. So the voltage are the same along each junction. Now then the next thing is um, okay. We've got the current. We've got the uh, voltage. We need a resistance. So R is equals to V over I. But along that junction. So along that junction, the voltage is also six. The current just now was four. Okay. So this was one point five uh, ohms. So one point five ohms. Okay, one point five, one point zero, also ten. Okay, uh, so that's part three. Part D. Calculate the amount of energy transferred in resistor X in fifteen minutes. Okay, so energy and time. So confirm energy equals to power over time. Okay, and before that you need power volt times current. Okay, so first the power is equals to V I. So the voltage along that. Junction is six volt. The current just now given was current was three ampere. Okay, so go back. So three ampere. So the power is eighteen watts. Then the energy transferred is eighteen watts over fifteen minutes, but change to SI unit. Okay, change it to seconds. So we have. Eh, we have. Uh, one six two zero zero A. Sorry, wrong formula. Wrong formula. Wrong formula. Energy. Sorry, it's not this formula. Okay, power is equal to energy over time. All right, so power, energy over time. So eighteen watts. Uh, energy. I don't know. Time fifteen times sixty. Okay, sorry, I'm a bad. Formula remember wrongly. Okay, so here the energy is eighteen times fifteen times sixty. So this is actually one six two zero zero joules. Okay, like that. Okay, so okay, next one. Um, I guess is there anything? Okay, last but not least, nine question nine. Okay, a piece of Metal foil is attached to a metal rod as shown in Figure nine point one. 
Okay, so metal rod, metal foil, like a leaf, uh, the golden leaf experiment. Okay, oh, okay, if you want reference, okay, golden leaf experiment. Okay, go, go and look up on YouTube. Okay, the metal rod and the metal foil contain negative charges that are free to move throughout the metal and positive charges that are not free to move. So as mentioned in lessons, the electrons are the one moving, the protons are the one fixed because they are in the atom, in the nucleus of the atom. Right? So the metal rod and foil have no overall charge, so meaning at this stage, no overall charge, meaning neutral. Okay? A negatively charged plastic strip is held close, never touch, uh, but held close to the top of the metal rod. The metal foil move away from the metal rod as shown in figure 9.2. What is going on? Explain why the metal foil moves away from the metal rod. So this is what we call the electrostatic induction. Okay, we call this induction. Okay, if uh, it's in contact, it comes into contact, the metal foil will lift up also. But now, you just bring it close to it, it also moves up. Okay, because of the transfer of uh, no, not transfer because of the movement of electrons. So what is going on first? As before, it was neutral, so meaning the electrons will be negative, uh, will be uh, evenly distributed. Okay, but now what happens is if you bring the negatively charged plastic over, what happens to the electrons? The electrons will try to be uh, the electrons are repelled from the top of the metal foil. So you you have more negative charge at the bottom and you have more negative charge on the metal foil because all the electrons will actually move away okay, into other parts, the, the, the bottom parts of the rod and foil. Okay? And at the bottom part it is negatively charged because it is negatively charged then you see that the negative charge will repel. The, the, foil, and the foil will be repelled away from the metal rod. Okay? So you can see that um, Okay, so when the okay, negatively charged plastic, and then plastic, right, the electrons not free to move. Okay, and the negatively charged plastic okay, is held near the top, okay, but not in contact, uh, near the top okay, uh, of the metal rod. Uh, okay, then you can see that the negative charges in the metal rod charges in the okay in the metal rod okay uh, are repelled okay to the bottom part of the rod and the metal foil okay okay and because of that or the opposite ends are uh, okay so now as okay as the ends as the two ends have the same charge they okay, all have the same negative charge Okay, the metal foil is repelled. And move away. Ah moves away from the metal rod. Okay? So it's just uh, explaining and describing what happens. Okay? So once again, okay, one more time. Now, before this, uh, the electron distributions are uh, even, and when you bring a negatively charged plastic here, now for an in for an insulator, the electrons don't move easily, but for a metal, the electrons move easily. So what happens to the electron is they will scurry away. So from they are being pushed away to the two ends, the two opposite ends of the metal rod. Okay, and as the bottom ends are same having the same charge, the metal foil will also be repelled. So you can see the metal foil being repelled away. Okay. Okay. So tada, question nine. Okay. Now, so once again, this is on the concept of electrostatic 
uh, 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 induction. Okay, induction. Okay, so this one, uh, take note. Uh. Alright, uh, okay. Question 10, section B. Section B for this, uh, for this paper, no choice, but in, in O level, we still get a choice, which is good actually. So, yeah, um, so we, yeah, at least you can see which questions we are comfortable with. Okay. Figure 10.1 shows a type of thermostat okay, that is used to switch off a fan when the temperature is low. Okay, so this thermostat works on liquid A okay, and O con uh, it is with mercury. Okay, and there is contact with the mercury. Mercury is a metal okay, from the chemistry. Uh, mercury is a metal okay, in liquid form. Okay, so yeah, and then you have your power supply, your fuse, and your fan. Okay, so what happens when the liquid A uh, is cold is that you know cold things, when it is cold, uh, things will shrink. So your liquid A will shrink and your mercury will be here. And yeah, there's no contact, so there's no, they will turn off the fan. Quite nice, huh? So the volume of liquid A changes by a large amount when the temperature change. Okay, so even here, mercury is a metal that is liquid in at room temperature. So actually these are like the common knowledge that one should have after studying science. But I think you, it's good that the exam will state it for you and then it's good that you read it and in case you, you forgot about these facts, at least it's there. Okay, now use a kinetic theory to explain why liquid has a fixed volume and is able to flow. Wow, okay. Uh, why does it have a fixed volume? Um, okay, you can say that, okay, liquid kinetic theory molecule. Okay, so what is the arrangement of the molecules? Okay, kinetic theory, we have, oh sorry, kinetic theory, we need to talk about two things. Sorry, uh, we need to talk about uh, motion. We need to talk about arrangement. Okay. So, what is the arrangement of the molecules? So, why does it, does it have fixed volume? Okay, so, you can say that the uh, liquid molecules okay, are uh, closely packed. Okay, so, they are packed. Uh, closely packed uh, with little space between them. with little space between them so it has a fixed volume hence it has a fixed volume okay fixed volume as um, they cannot be compressed as uh, the molecules cannot move closer to each other Okay, next one, able to flow, then we talk about the motion of the molecules. So the, the molecules are free to move. Okay. Free to move and, okay, not randomly move out and slide across each other. Okay. So, which is, hence, it is able to flow. Okay, free to move, but not random direction, but you just can move. Uh, okay, uh, what else? Okay, that's one. Number two, why liquid A expands when it's heated? So, when, so when it expands, the it, uh, no, sorry, uh, why, when it is heated, okay, so we start when it's heated. Okay, so when... Liquid A is heated. Okay, uh, its temperature will increase, correct? Its temperature will increase. Okay, and because of that, it has more kinetic energy to move. Okay, it has more in uh, kinetic energy and the molecules move faster 
and needs and takes slightly more space. Okay. Hence, the volume increases. Okay, just like that. Okay. Alright, so explain why the fan switches off when the temperature is too low. So when the temperature is too low, it is not heated. So instead of expanding, liquid A will shrink. Okay, so when the temperature is too low, okay, don't need to explain the, the whole uh, why the liquid A shrinks, but when, yeah, just say that it shrinks. Okay, so liquid A shrinks. Okay. So when it shrinks, what happens? Okay, so the mercury level will also shrink. The mercury level will also go down. Okay, and this and loses contact with either one of the contact. Okay, what do you call that? Contact. Loses contact with the what do you call that? Mm, one of the contact points. Okay. Okay, you can also say that. Okay, uh, you want to say the uh, what do you call that? The height of liquid A in the column. Decreases also can. Okay, all right. So because of that, the circuit is open. The circuit will be open, and no current will flow through it. Okay, and the fan is switched off. Ta-da! Three months. Okay, so it's just a mechanism of the whole uh, object. Okay, so the fan has a power operated from that whole suggest a suitable value of fuse rating. So fuse rating signals to us that we need to calculate the current. Okay, support the suggestion with a calculation. So power is equals to volt PD times current. So power 0 0.045 kilo, so times 1000. Okay, then operated from 230 volt and the current. So the current will be equals to uh, 0 0.045 times 1000 divided by 230 so this is 0 0.196 ampere so you need wow well, the ampere is very small eh? okay so you can say that uh, 0 0.25 ampere you can use a 0 0.25 ampere um, Okay, now how do you know which one to use, right? So I think it is good to uh, remember some common uh, fuse ratings. Okay, must take note, huh? right? So 1, 2, 5, 10, uh, and what else? 13. Okay, the below one I'm not too sure, but this one very rare. Okay, so yeah. But usually the number quite nice one, 0 0.25. I'm not sure about 0 0.5, but I have to check. Okay. Okay, so that is question 10. Okay, easy. Question 11, uh, not tested, common last topic. Because we've got magnet. Um, oh, okay. We can do part B. Okay, the magnet. Frequency. Okay, never mind. Let's keep this question entirely. Okay. Hey, wait. I think we can do. We can do this. Okay. Use figure. Okay. So, um, what is going on is okay. You've got iron rod and small bar magnet, and then you have a paper cone over here. Okay. And as the whole current works, um, the paper cone will vibrate and causing sound wave. Okay. So use figure eleven point one. Okay, so use figure 11.1 to calculate the frequency of the sound wave. So frequency, we've got two formula, V equals to F lambda, and F is equals to 1 over T. 
Okay, so let's take a look at the graph. What does the graph say? Figure it down from one. Okay, so the graph is a time graph. So using we referring to the formula, we should know to use uh, what to call that the t, the period. So what is the period? So this will give you the period. Okay, 0 0.02 seconds. Okay, one wave, two wave, three wave. So it's the time taken for one wave. Okay, so T, okay, T is equal to 0 0.02 seconds. So therefore, the frequency 1 over 0 0.02 will be equal to 50 hertz. Okay, 50 hertz. Now, the power supply P is now replaced with a second power supply, change this, which causes the speaker to produce a higher frequency, 240. Okay, so the speed of the sound calculate the wavelength. So, then this formula. So, V equals to F lambda. So, 330. F is 240. Lambda is just lambda. Okay, so lambda equals to... Uh, 330 over 240. So this will be 1.38 meters. 3 as F. Okay. 1.38 meters. So the new current is smaller. So describe and explain how the sound produced with the second power supply is different from that power produced by power supply P. Okay, so... Um, Second power supply. Okay, I think the obvious one is the F change. Okay, so as the frequency generated is higher, okay, the sound, the second sound will have a higher pitch. Okay, so this is the first point that we can secure, right? The second point will involve some use of the electricity. So when you have power supply, you keep the voltage, correct? So when you have a power supply increase, when you have a power supply increase, the current will actually increase. Okay, the current will increase. So what is going on when the current increase in the circuit? It will cause the it will have it will cause more vibration. Okay, so the other okay the other one if you don't know never mind. Okay, but it will cause more vibration, meaning or more amplitude. Okay, it will vibrate more violently or vigorously, more amplitude. So when the amplitude increase, the sound will be louder. Okay, so I don't think we can you know don't think we need to like write it down, but the general idea will do. Okay, last question of the day. Question twelve. Question twelve. Okay, I think we just move straight to question 12. Okay, so that one is just a taste of how to use uh, whatever material, uh, whatever graph you have to solve sound questions or wave questions. Okay, yeah, we, oh, the whole paper I never see wave. 2014, yeah, didn't see waves at all, so yeah, this is a good point to do. Okay, question 12. Okay, question 12. Now, um, I think a lot of us like, neglected this chapter kinetics because it's too difficult to understand and there's too many things to understand. But the most important thing is you need to know what the shape of the graph tells you and what is the graph telling uh, what is the graph first. So the graph is a VT graph, velocity time graph. Okay, so for a VT graph, you need to know two things: the gradient, area under graph. Gradient gives us the acceleration. The area under graph gives us the distance travel. Okay, so the VT graph is the one in the in the middle. Distance, velocity. Uh, acceleration is the one in the middle, so it can go both ways. Okay, take the gradient or take the uh, area under graph. So here, okay, so you've got A to F. Uh, it shows the car braking, blah, 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 but not in order. So we need to match these things to A to F. And then they say that this is a, this is called demolition derby. So I, I search what is demolition derby, so it's like something like this, where cars drive around to bang each other. <laughs> Okay, yeah, like it's like uh, how to get the Spanish bullfight but with cars. Wow, America. Okay, okay, so okay, let's go back to this. Uh, so from A to F, figure top one shows the car, okay, braking and so on. So A to B, uh, the speed is zero. So if the speed is zero, what is it? It is stationary, 
right? A to B, the speed is zero. Okay, B to C, the okay, it is the speed increases. The speed is increases, but okay, you've got two increasing speed. Okay, increasing speed or increasing speed at greatest rate. So greatest rate meaning greatest rate uh, rate of change gradient. Okay, take note the math concept, the rate of change meaning the gradient. Okay, so which one has a bigger gradient? B C to C D. So it's actually this one, uh, B to C. Okay, so increasing speed. Okay at its greatest rate. Okay, C to D, increasing speed. Okay, but technically speaking, right, if you are, if you can spot nicely, uh, this one for C to D, uh, constant acceleration, straight lines. That means fixed gradient, so fixed acceleration. Okay, D to E, okay, D to E, the speed decreases. So what is it doing? Um, and okay, it is okay. Then e to g, e f. Okay, e to f to g. What happens to the okay e to f? Then the speed decreases sharply, meaning something happened. Uh, something drastic happened. So d to e maybe breaking. Okay, not so bad. But e to f is the one where it collide with another car, and stop. Stopping, yeah, stopping. Okay, so actually, now this graph, right, doesn't tell us where the car is. It only tells us what the speed of the car is. So we don't have to care what the what the what is where is the car, what happens to the car. But you can imagine, we can imagine what happens to the car. But we don't have to know where exactly is the car. Okay, it's just the speed that will tell us the condition of the car. Is it faster, slower, braking, stepping on the pedal, and so on? Okay. Okay, so that's point uh, part one. Now, by considering the forces of the car, explain why the speed of the car decreases between D and E. So it is braking, right? Okay, so by why is this. Okay, the three marks is where. The three marks is for one and two. So I think this one is just one mark, if I'm not wrong. At most two marks. Uh, yeah, they ask you to fill in so many bands, so it should be two marks above here is one mark. Uh. So this one you can say the speed of the car decreases because why there is a deceleration or there is a negative acceleration. Okay? Speed decrease because there's a negative acceleration. And why is that a negative acceleration? Because that's a negative force or a force in a negative direction or force in the opposing direction. So you can say that there's a resultant force in the opposite direction. Okay? Like that. Okay, so you can say that um, as the car breaks, okay, what happened? The car breaks, right? So there is a resultant force okay, acting in the opposite direction of the movement of the car. Okay, so now, when you talk about force linking to acceleration, actually this thing is what we know as Newton's second law. So by Newton's second law, okay, so when you talk about force and acceleration, uh, the net force is equal to ma, this is Newton's second law. Okay, so by Newton's second law, uh, what you call this? Uh, uh, okay, uh, there will be a negative acceleration or there is and acceleration in the opposite direction, in the negative direction. The okay, opposite direction. Or deceleration. Okay. So hence the speed decreases. Okay. So force is the so force 
Uh, no, sorry. So the acceleration is a bridge between force and speed. Okay, by considering the force of the car, explain what the speed. So in between, we need to mention acceleration. Okay, why? Because force equals to ma, right? The resultant force equals to ma, and the acceleration is equals to v minus u over t, the speed. Okay, so the acceleration is the middle point of force and speed. So as you take as you learn chapter two and three, uh, dynamics and kinematics, right? Force will give the speed, the speed comes from the force, so it's a whole story linked together. Okay, so this one story of why things speed up and slow down. The second story is, of course, energy. Okay, so describe the motion of the car between points F and K. So this one, this one you need to take note, F and K. Right, F to K. So between FG, what happened? Between G, the first part, and the second part, we have negative velocity, and what does negative velocity mean? Traveling in the opposite direction. Okay, H to J, speed is zero. Then J to K is uh J to K is speeding up. Okay, in a positive direction. Okay, so negative velocity means negative uh movement. Okay, and positive velocity means uh positive movement moving in a positive direction. So the the number gives us the value. But the positive negative gives us the direction. Okay, so let's see. Uh, first, let's talk about FG. Okay, so at FG, okay, the car is uh, stationary. Okay, stationary. N A R Y right, uh, E is the, the pen, pencil, and so on. Okay, for a brief period of time. Okay, then at G to H, okay, the car is traveling backwards. Okay, traveling backwards or in the opposite direction. Okay, um, and then it reaches. Okay, must because this is description and format, so we have to be a bit specific. Reaches a maximum. Velocity of negative ten, so which is uh, okay, maximum speed. Okay, velocity is negative ten, so the speed is ten without the direction. Okay, in the backward direction. Okay, backward direction. Okay, okay. Since it's not quite a while, let's see ah, uh, how many seconds is this ah? Uh? How many seconds do, does it experience a negative velocity? So this is 38.53 38.53 So 15 seconds I think Okay, backward direction at 53 seconds Okay, okay alright So in the backward direction Okay, now my um, We just talked about the speed Before the Speed reduces to zero again. Okay. So it is okay. So it travels backwards, negative, right? So it goes to ten, and it the the, the no sorry, not the car. The speed goes to ten, and the speed goes to zero. So meaning the the speed increases and decreases. Okay, but the car is moving in the negative direction because that's the negative speed. Last but not least, okay, H J. Oh no, two two more. Okay, H J. So at HJ, what happens? The car is stationary again. Okay, for a brief period. Okay, again. Okay, then uh, at JK. Okay, at JK, the car... Okay, what happens to the car? Okay, straight line graph, right? Straight line graph meaning constant acceleration. So, uh, the car travels at constant acceleration, okay, okay, in the forward direction because positive, okay, so must mention direction, uh, in the forward direction, okay, from 0 meter per second to, what's the new speed? The new speed is six meter per second. Okay, 
six meter per second. Like that. Okay, so I don't think you need to talk much about the time, but just talk about the speed. Okay, describe the motion usually asks us to talk about the speed. Okay, last but not least, calculate the average acceleration of the car between points C and D. So here, acceleration A is equal to V minus U over T. Right, let's take a look at CD. Okay, at CD, this point. Okay, so we got U, V, uh, T. So the U is initial speed, 15. Then final speed, 20. The time taken, 8 seconds. Right? So we have... So we have okay, 20 minus 15 over 8. Okay, so this would be 0 0.625 meter per second squared. So 0 0.625. Oh, you need to make sure adding units meter per second squared. Right? And yeah, check uh, meter and second, meter per second and second. Okay? Right, so change in velocity over time. So the, I think the challenge would be to describe the motion. Okay, I think it will make a comeback sometime. I don't know whether it came last year. But anyway, go to take note. Huh? Okay, for part B. Right, part A gives us a, a, a hint roughly what to write. Part B is the one we need to like survive on our own. Okay, but okay. So the, the only key thing is for this part at GH. Since the velocity is negative, so it's the car is travelling in the backward direction, okay, in the opposite direction. Then this last part, the velocity is positive, so it's traveling in the forward position. So yeah, I, I think that's yeah, I think that's why you need to take note. So nothing much to worry so far from yeah from this. Okay, so I think as long as you keep doing, you're exposed to more questions. You should be more familiar with what's going on and what to expect. Okay, and I think you can see that some questions are repeating here and there. It, even in paper one, you can see like questions repeating here and there. So I think like um like if you have been following throughout so far, uh, it'd be good to start on paper one. Okay, it'd be good to start on paper one to see uh what kind of calculation you need, what kind of speedy calculation, speedy mentality to think of, uh what kind of tricks and tips and tricks that you need, uh that you don't need to write in full in like paper two, but you can use in paper one to do. Okay, so just some advice to your TYS and do the other brilliant papers for the added uh, age and uh, challenge to challenge your brain. Okay, so I guess that's all for now. Okay, uh, have a good weekend. Bye-bye. See you again next Tuesday. I will do this again next Tuesday for 2016. Yeah, so next week, three live streams, okay? Alright, I guess that's all. Okay, bye-bye. Yes, and, 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 and.